Hi there, it's Peter Canego here from Midship Cinema. Thanks for joining me today. Last month on the final voyage of the Carnival Ecstasy, I had the pleasure and honor of sitting with Carnival brand ambassador, John Heald, who is of course, probably the most famous cruise director after Julie from The Love Boat, the world of cruising has ever seen. So John and I discussed the Carnival Ecstasy and I gave him sort of a Rorschach test of cruise ships where I named the Carnival ship and he gave me a one word or sometimes one paragraph or one full story answer. Uh, so anyway, we had a great time in the Windsong dining room of Carnival Ecstasy during her final voyage. Thanks for joining me and please remember to hit like and subscribe. Hey, Hello, how are you? I'm great, John. How are you? Are you filming? I am. Is that all right? I'm I'm... Yes. Oh. <laughs> but what better? <laughs> Fantastic. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is John Heald. I'm the brand ambassador for Carnival Cruise Line. I've uh, been with the company now 35 years. Started when I was 11. Um, and um, we're talking to you today from Carnival Ecstasy, of which is on her final cruise. So I have about 1,800 of my um, friends sailing with me, and it's an honor to have them here. And they've all come with their own story to say goodbye to this beautiful ship, which holds so many memories for so many people. Well, this, one was, this one was unique because um, just before the build started, um, the shipyard went bankrupt. So we had a, a bit of a help. We gave them a bit of a help, which meant we had a lot more say in the changes we made from fantasy to this one. Um, and uh, this is where I believe Joe became the king of neon. Yeah. You know, he really took the gloves off. And I, I love his entertainment architecture. I know, you know, we, we, as we say goodbye to the ship, we have to remember that Joe was such an important part of the early years of Carnival, and yeah. um, you know that wow factor is is, is it, for this ship. You know, walking into that atrium with all the neon and the the two glass elevators in its time, it was you know the Vegas of the seas. All those labels that we used to have, right? And and that was thanks to Joe. But even better than Vegas, because there's a. Vegas is just flash and glitz, but this was truly design. You know, this is like Fritz Lang's Metropolis. Absolutely. This is like, you're just like, oh my God. And you expect people, you know, to be coming out in Art Deco costumes and, you know, it's, space it's, age deco. I would, yeah, you look at Joe and he, he was everything. He, uh, the, the neon to, I don't know, Jackson Pollock uh, designed um, <laughs> lounges and, you know, maybe uh, some of his his designs were a, a little too outlandish for the minority, but for the majority, it was absolutely escapism from everyday life, and that's what our ships were in the in in the beginning. Yeah. I miss that very much. Um, I think the new ships are all they're very pleasant and they're they're sort of PC, but they're they're too restrained, and I don't like having, you know. I can say this to you, and I guess I can say my people, um, but having an alchemy bar in every ship that looks exactly like the alchemy bar in the other ship, you know, I get it because they want people to come in and be comfortable and know that I can get that same drink and sit in that chair that yeah. I like. But and, and I love the personality. It, and I see, and, and you know, for a lot of people that it is comforting, but it's also a bit of a testament to where life is at the moment that we, we change is not always is a risk these days and yeah. taking a big risk at the moment is probably not advisable so uh, yeah. I think the comfort uh, of knowing that you're going to have the best burger and get your cucumber sunrise and yeah but you know when you look at Mardi Gras and celebration and you know if someone had said to me when I sat here as cruise director 1992 that we were going to have a roller coaster on a ship and that we were going to have a, a huge ship as big as I would have laughed yeah. uh, you know so it's it's this was the foundation for 
what's well, out there now. Yeah, I totally agree. And I was the purest back in the day when this thing came out. I remember being on the deck of the Britannis in Miami, you know, built in 1931. And this thing sails by with the pulsating fiber optic lights, like the disco ship. You can hear the music playing. Absolutely. And I was just like, oh, that is so horrible. And then, you know, it took me a while to grow oh, into no. it. You know? I, I, yeah. I was on this ship as we sailed past the Britannic <laughs> and uh, the um, the Greek, what was the, was it Chandris? Chandris, Chandris yeah. 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 And the other ship, I've forgotten the name now. Uh, anyway, yeah, Americanis. Americanis Mar and something of anyway and yeah. i would say oh over the pa system look at the party atmosphere over on the britannis there's one balloon <laughs> you know and we'd have all the the noise and the people screaming and um yeah listen it was uh, it was brash it was a, i don't know a better word it was american yeah. it yeah. was america it was yeah. everyday people coming whether they drove a truck or owned the biggest trucking company in the in America, they were all on our ship together and they were letting themselves go and having, is that word, fun. Yeah. yeah, no, truly fun. I remember my first Carnival cruise was on Carnival in 1982. And I don't think I was sober for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> my head hurts oh. thinking about that. But we had the best time in that ship, you know, even though she was the classic old lady and that's why I was on her because I was running around photographing the etch glass panels, all the stuff that ended up in, you know, in my house now, basically on that ship, I had no idea what was going to happen in the future, but I loved her because of her history. Mm -hmm. But I was just blown away by the people, you know, I was hanging out with people from Texas and, and Georgia and, you know, pl places that I'd never met people from, you know, and I was a California oh, kid. That's amazing. And it was just like, oh my God, these people are so fun. And, you know, anyway. I love that ship. Yeah. You know, my two quick, very favorite things. I was, uh, it was my first ship as cruise director. I was only there for a couple of months, but I remember the two things I loved so much was the captain did the maneuvers on the open neck of the mm -hmm. bridge. Mm -hmm. um, and the ship's wheel was about the size of this mirror that you can see over here. Yep. It was a proper ship's wheel. And the, 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 the teak and the oak would creak with the ship's movement. It was proper, proper ship. Yes. And I, she was, Incredible. Beautiful British liner and the woodwork and everything. Now, are you going to be on the celebration? Yes, I will be. Wow, yeah, great. Yeah, I'll on be there. Um, with, I'm going across to the yard in, uh, at the end of October and mm -hmm. then uh, bring her across to Southampton and uh, get her ready for um, another fabulous uh, entrance to the market. I'm going to be on her November 27th press trip. That's will you be sailing? Yes, I'm, they've got me coming on that yes. one. So awesome, awesome. That's going to be a wonderful trip. And yeah. she's, she's a really fabulous ship. She really is. And um, I think, you know, the fact that we're taking some of the thing, like the Rolls Royce from here is going to be on uh, yeah. board. So I'm yeah. going to be doing an auction tomorrow for uh, St. Jude. Um, I saw some of the some things. Of the things yeah. uh, but, you know, there are some other things that, that we have to try and save. Um, there's a statue right in front of the main lounge from the yard, yeah. from Massa Yard, which yeah. we have to keep. Yeah. But you know, it's sad to think the chair you're sitting on is yeah. going to be in somebody's living room in in Istanbul in the next. Uh, Let's hope. Yeah, and yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, it will not chopped yeah, up, not be smashed and, and, no. and d destroyed. Okay, it's like it's a Rorschach test. Okay. Okay. So it. I'll say the name: Carnival Miracle. Alaska. Okay. Carnival legend. Family. And a quick abbreviation on Carnival legend. Um, I it was the last ship my mother and father cruised on. Oh. Carnival pride. Captain Alex Galotto. <laughs> Carnival spirit. Spirit class, massively popular. May we keep them forever. Yes. Carnival Luminosa. She's going to be amazing. Visited her uh, a couple of weeks ago. She looks incredible. Italian, um, Dolce Vita mixed with Carnival Fun. Yeah, perfect. Carnival Sunshine. C Carnival Destiny. <laughs> that was my next Carnival Destiny. Carnival Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Carnival, 
Carnival Radiance. Um, West Coast, huge hit. Carnival Victory. Sec uh, second ship of the Triumph class that I brought out as cruise director. Wonderful memories, a little bit green. <laughs> Carnival Sunrise. Carnival Triumph. <laughs> Carnival Triumph. Carnival Sunrise. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> those just what I, I, I think of the new ones as the old ones still. Gotcha. Fantasy. The foundation of my career with as a cruise director and um, Richard Simmons. <laughs> Carnival Ecstasy. Memories, beautiful ship, Joe Farkas, possibly having smoked his own underwear for part of the architecture. <laughs> Carnival sensation. Second new ship I delivered as a cruise director, best crossing ever, for reasons you will never know. <laughs> Carnival fascination. Miss her miss her a ship that provided so much fun sad to see how she ended carnival imagination one of my favorite ships ever um did four straight contracts on her and just great times as a young single cruise director cut <laughs> carnival inspiration the only ship in the fleet i was never a cruise director of and you won't be now. No, and I miss her too. Carnival Elation. Mr. Arison and I having a conversation together for the very first time when we brought that chip out. And that was a huge thing for me. Mr. Ted or Mr. Mickey? Mickey. Mickey. Okay. Carnival Paradise. First non-smoking ship. Didn't quite work out but the huge non-smoking sign on the side of the ship always be a visual for me. <laughs> me too. Carnival Panorama. West Coast and probably my favorite decor across the ship out of the class of ship. Okay. Carnival Horizon. GG, Asian Kitchen. I think the best restaurant we have on any ship is on Horizon, GG Asian Kitchen. I haven't tried it. I have to do that. Yeah. Duck and the second best Kung Po chicken I've ever had in the world ever. I'm a Kung Pao addict. Uh, Carnival Vista. Um, Carnival Vista, New York naming ceremony with a godmother who I won't mention here, who wasn't very nice to me. <gasps> I was there. Okay. She, um, was, she wasn't very nice to me. Oh, interesting. Uh, Carnival Breeze. Last ship I ever did as a cruise director. Oh. So a very special ship to me. It's a ship I said goodbye to my 27 years of cruise director career on. Carnival Magic. Carnival Magic. Um, probably Goodbye Joe. Hmm. It was the last ship where Joe had, uh, Joe Farkas had design in some of the areas. He did the casino and part of the promenade, but that was his last. And I, as we said, I miss some of his architecture. Uh, Carnival Dream. Arriving into San Juan, Puerto Rico on the inaugural cruise, everybody very excited and was told we were too big to go to the side of the pier. So I had to tell 3,000 people that we were too big and we had to turn around and leave. <laughs> <laughs> Free drinks at the bar. Yeah. Um, Carnival Splendor. 
Battle of the Splendor um, is probably the ship that is most dear to me um, and the reason is because of the fire that we had on board and having three days, four days of no hot water, no elevators, no air conditioning, no lighting, no hot food and four days spent on the bridge constantly talking to guests over the PA system and the way the crew took care of everybody, carrying people upstairs, you know, the sight of the Ronald Reagan aircraft carrier following us, bringing food and supplies across was probably the most rewarding four days from adversity to togetherness. So my memory of that ship is based on real, when you know we use the word carnival family, well that, that particular cruise, we all became carnival family. And spam. <laughs> God, I'm so sorry, remember that. <laughs> Uh, Carnival Freedom. Carnival Freedom. Um, I, I'm i going to say my first nudist cruise and my last. I will never do another one. Next. <laughs> Carnival Liberty. First uh, ship we sailed for a full European season in the history of Carnival and sailing her into places like Venice, down through past the Grand Canal, Piazza San Marco, um, and to other beautiful Na Naples, Capri, um, Florence, all those places, so Europe. Paradise on Earth. Uh, Carnival Valor? Carnival Valor, um, the uh, godmother of, on that particular cruise um, was a, a wonderful lady who whose name I've totally forgotten, but she was uh, in the US Army, captured in Iraq and rescued by special forces. And she's a very, very brave young lady and was a terrific godmother. It was so everything, she's from a very small town in Kentucky. And I just remember the absolute incredible gratitude she showed for being alive and for being the godmother. Carnival Glory. Carnival Glory. Um, <laughs> um, the piano bar pantry. Okay. Can't uh, say any more than that. <laughs> that's perfect. Let them wonder. Let them wonder. Carnival Conquest. Carnival Conquest. Um, I'm going to say a word, um, and that word is the name, Corey Schmidt. Um, probably one of the finest cruise directors the company ever had. It was his ship. He was cruise director on there for five years. Uh, tragically taken from us at a very, very young age. But every time I walk on that ship, I always think of him. Name Artie Gras. Original? Yeah. Well, I mean, everybody normally says, you know, about the first cruise and I wasn't there and I was never cruise director on there, but I, I visited the ship many times. So I'm going to say just pure, pure wood class. You just pictured pig gin and blue blazers with handkerchiefs in the top pocket and just a terrific ship that began it all. She was. I love that ship so much. Carnival. Sharing my cruise director cabin with Colin the Cockroach. <laughs> Carnival. Um, just an incredible memory. There were basically three lounges. The main lounge, the one in front of the main lounge, and then the disco all the way at the front. Uh, the purser's office that sold everything from messages in a bottle to key rings to magazines, no telephones in the cabin, um, and an incredible atmosphere of 600 people having a, just an absolute blast. And the, the, the sound of the creaking wood at night when the ship was in motion. 
Love it. This is beautiful. Festival. Fluff Alley. <laughs> okay. uh, tropical. First seeing the ship, walking on board, and thinking, wow, Carnival has built, built, not taken over, built a ship for cruising and thinking again, Joe, look at this, look at the neon, look at the sign, look at this. And, um, and then uh, going through a really terrible, terrible storm um, and the ship just riding it so strongly. Holiday. <laughs> well, my first ever ship as a bar waiter walking up the gangway in 1987 coming from London working in the stock exchange leaving two very disgruntled parents getting on a Pan Am flight landing at Miami nobody to meet me scared out my wits walking up the gangway being given a tray and a menu and said you work in two hours no training but just a brilliant time for any 20 year old who completely lied about knowing what cocktails were coming from England with warm beer and that was it but the beginning of my 35 years wow jubilee jubilee um the gazebo in the um middle of promenade deck uh, where we served eggs and bacon from between 1 uh, 12 and 1 a.m um, and um, another classic carnival ship. Celebration. Rand Woodbury, a magician working on there for a long time with me when I was cruise director. He turned a dancer into a 360 pound cougar called Geo that lived on the sun deck in a big cage. <laughs> this is too good. Um, or New Mardi Gras. Well, it'd be easy to say the roller coaster. It would be easy to say all of the restaurants that are just amazing and the incredible shows and Grand Central and all of these wonderful places. But I'm going to say um, for that ship, I'm going to say she's just incredibly massive and I never thought I would see a ship that big. And yeah, very special, very special. Carnival celebration. Some of the history of our, third, of our 50 years as a company will be placed in one of the zones. And I think that is going to be for me and for many people who love cruising, a very special area. Costa Venezia. Haven't been on board yet. Costa by Carnival will be very special, October 2023. So because I haven't seen her yet, I'm going to say simply, I don't know. <laughs> that was in Italian. You see, I moved my hand. She's going to be, as I mentioned a little bit with, with Luminosa, Costa by Carnival, Carnival Fun, La Dolce Vita, and who wouldn't want to eat in a dining room with a real sized, um, What do you call a vapor? Uh, 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 oh, uh, uh, gondola. Yeah, gondola. A gondola gondola there. <laughs> on water in the middle of the dining room. Now that's a more right. <laughs> okay. Can you top that with Costa Firenze? If she's, she is, according to my Costa friends, the most beautiful ship in the world. And Florence is arguably the most beautiful city in Italy. And again, that's going to be absolutely fabulous. Brilliant. Brilliant. I joined three weeks into the ship being brand new. The cruise director that was chosen to bring out the ship left unexpectedly. Um, I got, I'd just gotten off the uh, fantasy and I was, had I'd done a nine month contract and I was due to go home. And uh, then I got a phone call um, saying, could I come to the ecstasy? So I walked on here and I did three contracts on here. And my memories are, just of, of walking on the into the atrium and seeing you know the neon and 
being the cruise director on then the flagship. So very proud, proud memories. Beautiful. Do you have a favorite fantasy class ship? Um, I have two and it would be Carnival Ecstasy and Carnival Imagination. Those are my two and I will miss them both very dearly, very dearly indeed. Um, are there any particular memories of ecstasy that stand out for you? Lifeboat number seven. Um, I always remember standing in front of that and um, uh, doing my uh, lifeboat training with uh, with the captain, uh, with the staff captain. And I'll never forget this. And he said, John, you are a cruise director, but we remember before you are anything else, you are a seaman. And I said, thank you very much. <laughs> What will you miss about this ship? The size. You know, being a cruise director on board this ship, uh, even today as brand ambassador, I've met pretty much everybody by now. And, you know, as the ships got bigger, that became more and more difficult to do, to be out there all the time meeting people. But this definitely had a feel. Everybody met everybody. And, um, you know, if you, look at, if you look at the tables, it's quite fascinating to see because obviously the tables are... If you look at the tables here and then look at the tables on the Mardi Gras, the difference is how very few tables for two we have here mm -hmm. and how every most of the tables are bigger tables because back then people didn't want to sit on there, they wanted to meet new friends and they yeah. wanted to sit with other people and that trend is slowly disappearing which in my humble and opinion is a little sad. Yeah, you know, I think the ships are too big for that. You can't see the same people. Unless exactly. You, you know, make an appointment with you them. You have to first. make an appointment with them. That's right. Well, um, the, the memories, the memories, are different for me on every ship, but the one, the common denominator, is the crew. The crew that worked in 1987 with me when I first started to the crew here in 2022. Um, different people, mostly. Um, 60, 70 different nationalities back then, even more probably today. And there is just something outside of the training we give them, outside of the company uh, morals that we install on them. There is something that makes the crew and the guests connect more on our ships, I believe, than any other cruise company in the world. And that's what keeps so many people coming back, is the crew members, and it's been the same when you and I were speaking about Carnival and Mardi Gras as it is I'm going to be on the new Carnival celebration.